Okay, so we are continuing with the sub topic termination of offer. We have already talked about what an offer, what is meant by termination of offer. Maybe we are on the ways by which an offer may be terminated. We said an offer can be terminated by lapse of the offer. They were looking at when we talk about lapse of offer, what it means. And we said the first one is that when the offeror dies, then it means the offer has lapsed and therefore it is terminated. When the offer dies, then it means the offer has lapsed and then it is terminated. Then we came to the second point that was passing of time. And I explained to you that if you made an offer and you stipulated a certain time, and I gave you an example that if, for example, I wanted to sell a car and I indicated that by Monday 10 a.m. the offer terminates or the offer lapses. If it is not accepted by that time, the offer will no more be in existence. So nobody can accept it after 10 a.m. You can only accept it before Monday 10 a.m. So when the time passes, then it means the offer lapses. Then I was looking at a point where you did not state the time. So that went to how does the offer lapse by passing of time? And I said, it is by the interpretations of a reasonable person. It is by the interpretations of a reasonable person. And the concept of reasonable person, you understand it because you have de dealt with that one. And there is a case. This case is related to passing of time. And what we are going to look at is very simple. The case is Ramsgate Victoria Hotel Company versus Montefiore in 1866. We are looking at passing of time. We are using this case to show you that if somebody makes an offer and you don't accept the offer within a certain period of time, the offer will lapse, even if they did not state that lapses on specified times. By the interpretations of a reasonable person, the offer will lapse. And here, it was somebody who made an offer to buy shares in the company. When he made the offer, he did not have any reply from the company for six good months. So later he was there and they said they had allotted shares to him after six months and he refused to take up the shares. They sued him. They said, no, you have to pay. He had already made deposit. He made part payment. So they said he should pay the rest. And he said, I will not pay because I made the offer six months ago and you, you are now uh, allotting the shares to me. I have redrawn. I have terminated the offer. Or the offer has been terminated. So they sent him to court to pay the rest, to pick the shares and to pay the rest. And the court said that he was within his right not to accept it. Not to accept the shares. Why? Because of the time. They said somebody had made that offer and you have waited for six months to buy shares. And you have waited for six months. Every reasonable person will know that within that six months, the offer has terminated. So they said the prices of shares fluctuated. At times it moves up it comes down, it moves up, it comes down, it moves up. So with the, if something that fra uh, fluctuates like that, how can you ask the person to accept it after six months? So the court said, if he said he was not ready to pick the shares, he was right not to pick the shares. So they lost the uh, case. That was what happened in this uh, the, uh, Ramsgate, uh, Victoria Hotel Company versus Multi Ferry in 1866. This was the plaintiff, the defender. The plaintiff, that was the company that allotted the shares. The one that made 
they offered to buy the shares and then they didn't give the share to him within a specified period of time. So this is it. The defendant offered by a letter dated 8 June 1864 to buy shares in their company and make part payment. No reply was made by the company. But on 23rd November 1864, so uh, June 64, November 64, so June, July, August, September, October, November, almost six months. Almost six months. Eight. 2010, 8, 20, so almost six months. That was the time they allotted the shares. The defendant refused to take up the shares. So when he refused to take up the shares, then they sued him. That compulsory, you have to take the shares, you have to buy the shares that have been allotted to you. Held. His refusal was justified. The court said he was right to refuse to take up the shares. Why? 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 Time has elapsed. Therefore, the offer is terminated. So that is for that one. Now, for shares, six months, they said it has been terminated. But other things may not be six months. So, let, so I've written something. Let's look at tomatoes. Now, you know, tomatoes has high higher degree of perishability. So if somebody made an offer to sell tomatoes, fresh tomatoes today, how long can the person keep their tomatoes? So if I've made an offer to sell fresh tomatoes today and you accept it after one week, the offer will certainly terminate, it will last. Because every reasonable person will know that for uh, tomatoes, by in a week's time, it may be getting spoiled. What about fresh fish? A day, <laughs> a day can make it terminate. A day, just a day. What about building materials? <laughs> building materials. You know, these days, quite recently, you go and buy cement. The next day you go, price, they, they have increased the price. At that time, then such offer may terminate within even a day. So let's look at that one. I hope you have understood passing of time. The fact that when the time is stated, and the father, when the time is not stated, this one is telling that when time is not stated, yet after six months, the judge said that the, if the person did not take up their shares, he was right. So that was for that one. Now, remember, we are looking at lapse of offer. And I said A, death of the offer or offer is B, passing of time. C, none occurrence when you say non occurrence means something did not occur so non occurrence of an express when you say you have expressed something it can either be in written or oral so non occurrence of an express or implied condition subject to which the offer was made i repeat non occurrence of an express or implied condition. You know what is meant by implied condition? Subject to which the offer was made. It means that if you make an offer, the offer is based on a certain condition. Whether you said it, or you wrote it, or by your action. If that condition does not exist, if that condition does not come, if that condition is absent, then the offer terminates. The offer lapses. The offer lapses. Now, if I made an offer to sell a car, then you saw the car, it was in a certain condition. Then you decided to accept to buy the car. But by the time you accepted the car to buy the car, the car had been involved in an accident. Now, the condition, the implied condition, Subject to which you accepted the offer is no more existing. Now the car had been involved in accident. It is not in the state it was when you saw it and wanted to buy it. 
So the offer has lapsed because of non-occurrence of an implied condition. Subject to which it was based on that condition, you decided to accept it. Number two, express. I will say the car to you if it rains. I will say the car to you if my brother comes tomorrow. So it is based on an express condition. So if that condition does not exist, then the offer lapses. So that is the third one. Non occurrence of an express or implied condition subject to be the offer is made. Don't forget that we are looking at lapse of termination of offer, ways by which an offer can be terminated. Number one, we said lapse of the offer. And we are talking about three things and the lapse of offer. So the question is, when you are asked, what is lapse of offer? You said lapse of offer is when the offer terminates either by the death of the offeror or the offeree, by passing of time, and by non-occurrence of an express or implied condition subject to which the offer was made. So that is that one. Now, number two. But you see, when you are talking about ways by which an offer can be terminated, we can leave the whole of this one and write number one, the death of the offeror. Number two, passing of time. Number three, non-occurrence of an express or implied condition subject to which the offer was made. Number four, which is the next one, rejection of the offer. An offer terminates when it is rejected. When it is rejected, the offer terminates. As for this one, I know uh, you understand it. When you reject something, okay, I came to you, I wanted to sell my car to you. Then I said, I have this car, I want, I'm selling the car at 20,000, can you say, I will not buy. <laughs> you have rejected it. So the moment you said, I will not buy, you have rejected it. So the offer has terminated. There is another way you can reject the offer. This one you said, I will not buy, is direct rejection. So the moment you reject it, the offer has terminated. Now, as soon as you said, I will not buy, then just after a, mi a, a minute, or even in a, just a second, when you say, I will not buy, so oh, okay, I will buy. Remember, when you say you will buy, you are not accepting the offer. The moment you said, I will not buy, you rejected, the offer terminated. So now that you are saying you, are, you will buy, then you are rather making an offer. So you, you are making an offer. If you said you will buy now, you are making an offer. And I have to either accept your offer or to reject it. There is another indirect way that you can reject an offer. And how does it come? I said I was selling the car at 20,000 gallons. So, oh, I'll buy it at 15,000 gallons. You have indirectly rejected my offer. You have indirectly rejected my offer when you said you buy at 15,000. You have changed the term. One of the terms of my offer was that 15,000, 20,000 gallons. You said you have changed it and you are saying 15,000. You pay 15,000. So you have rejected my offer. It is called indirect rejection. And the technical term for this indirect rejection is called is, uh, counter offer. The term you use for indirect rejection is counter offer. Counter offer. Counter offer. So the rejection can be direct or it can be indirect. If it is indirect, it is called counter offer. So what is counter offer? If you are in class, I would have asked what is counter offer, and you should have been able to tell me what a counter offer is. A counter offer is an indirect rejection of the original offer by introducing new terms, or by introducing a new term. It's an indirect rejection of the original offer. What was the original offer? Sell the car at 20,000 Ghana cities. And you indirectly rejected it by introducing new terms. What was the new term? 15,000 Ghana cities. Another example can be that when I said I was selling the car at 20,000 Ghana cities, I will buy if you change the ties. So you have indirectly rejected it again by saying that if I change the tie, you buy. So you have made a counter offer. And a counter offer will cancel my offer. There is no offer again. 
So if you know that you come and you say that, oh, okay, you I'll buy it, even if you are not changing the tag, you are making an offer. That's how it is called counter. You have countered my offer. So you are now making a new offer, and I have the right to either accept it or not. So if I say, I will not uh, sell the car again, even if you are ready to buy it at 20,000 uh, with the same ties, I will not say, you cannot say you will see me because you have accepted. You are, you are not accepted. First, you rejected it. There was a counter offer. Once there was a counter offer, you have rejected my offer. Once my offer was rejected, it was no more standing. It was no more open. It is terminated. And so if you are introducing another offer, it, the honors is on me to either accept your offer or to reject it. And we are going to use a case to, for us to know the effect of counter offer. And that is height versus range. Height versus range in 1840. Height, H-Y-D-E, range in 1840. Who is the plaintiff? I hope you, you said height. If you said that, that was right. Who is the defendant? Range. It happened in 1840. What happened? The defendant had a farm and wanted to sell the farm. And the plaintiff this wanted to also buy the farm. So an offer was made to sell the farm at thousand pounds. The farm at thousand pounds. The plaintiff said he would pay 950 pounds. And the defendant said, okay, I'm going to think about it. So the plaintiff wanted to hear from the defendant. He never heard from him. So later, the plaintiff went and said that he was buying the farm at the thousand Ghana, no, thousand pounds that he requested for initial. And the defendant refused to sell the farm to him at the thousand pounds. So the plaintiff sealed him. That uh, you said you were selling the farm at thousand pounds. Now, I'm, I'm paying the thousand pounds, and why are you refusing? I'm accepting your offer. Why are you refusing? That is why he sued you. When it went to court, the court said the defendant was within his right not to sell the farm to the plaintiff. Why? Because the plaintiff made a counter offer. Once the plaintiff made this counter offer, the defendant's offer was cancelled. Once the defendant's offer was cancelled, now the plaintiff has, is now saying he's going to buy the farm at thousand. He's making an offer to buy. And the defendant has the right to either accept his offer or to reject it. And he said he was not accepting it. So that is the, what a uh, counter offer is and, and its effect. The moment there's a counter offer, you introduce a new term then the offer is terminated. I hope it is well understood. Now, you remember that when we were talking about offer, we said there is something that resembles offer, and that was invitation to treat. Now here we are talking about counter offer. There is something that resembles counter offer. If you are not careful, just like invitation to treat, you may think that it is an offer. The same thing, counter offer to have something that resembles it. It is called inquiry. To make an inquiry, inquiry, inquire. Inquiry. What is it? What is it? Now, inquiry doesn't cancel the offer. It is not a count of how does it come? When you, you want to request for further information, the inquiry requests for further information. It doesn't introduce new term. It requests for further information. For example, if this person said you are selling the farm at thousand pounds, then this one, uh, this one, this one said you are selling the 
farm a thousand pounds. Then this one said, okay, please can I pay the money in installment? That is not a counter offer. He's requesting for additional information as to the method of payment. Can I pay by check? That is not a counter offer. So the difference between counter offer and inquiry is that counter offer will introduce new terms, but an inquiry will request for further information. It doesn't introduce new terms. So let us note that. The last point, which is three here, but it can be five. Because remember, we said this can be number one, this can be two, this can be three, then this is four. If that is so, then it is five. This is five. This is five. An offer can be terminated by revocation. An offer can be terminated by revocation. When I did this, it means you understand. To revoke an offer, it means to call it back. To withdraw it, to call it back. Revocation is calling back the offer. That is what revocation of offer means. So if you are asked what is revocation of offer, it is calling back the offer. You remember my car example? Sell the car at 20,000 Ghana cities today, Friday. Then tomorrow I say, I'll come and I say, I'm no more selling the car. It means I have revoked the offer. I've called back the offer. I've withdrawn the offer. The moment an offer is revoked, it is terminated. So that is what revocation of offer is all about. And remember, we have learned it here that an offer cannot be revoked after it has been accepted. So if you want to revoke an offer, revoke it within a reasonable time before it is accepted. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of this session. We have looked at, we are looking at uh, the rules of offer what makes offer valid, the essential elements of an offer, then or, or of a valid offer. Then we also look at termination of offer. Let's look at our objective. Now, give four rules of offer. Two, state and explain any four ways by which an offer may be terminated. Three. Now, the three, I will give you a scenario and then you have to look at it. Now, uh, what is the time? What, what is the limit whether I can give that one? 23 minutes. 20. Three. I can do that. Okay. Now take this assignment. On, on, first March, 2023. Kofi, wrote a letter offering to sell his car to Yao. On 1st March 2023, Kofi wrote a letter offering to sell his car to Yao. So it's Kofi who wrote the letter and the offer was to sell his car to Yao. On Fourth March, Kofi wrote another letter revoking his offer to sell the car to Yao. On March 
Kofi's letter of offer got to Yao. On 8th March, Kofi's letter of offer got to Yao. On 9th March, Yao wrote a letter of acceptance in respect of Kofi's offer, address it rightly, put the right postage stamp, and delivered the letter to the postmaster on the 9th of March. On 11th of March, Kofi's letter of revocation, letter, letter of revocation, got to Yao. On 11th March, Kofi's letter of revocation got to Yao. Let me sum up. I said on 1st March 2023, Kofi wrote a letter offering to sell his uh, car, was it car? To Yao. On 4th, he wrote a letter to revoke that letter. On, 11, on the 8th of March, Kofi's letter of offer got to uh, Yao. So Yao received it. Received. Yao received it. The letter of offer. Letter of offer was received on the 8th of March. On 9th March, Yao, Yao wrote letter of acceptance and posted it on that same day. The address was right and the posted rate was also right. Kofi's letter of revocation got to Yao on the 11th. On the 11th. On the 11th. Now, write these questions down. Question A. When did offer take place? Give reason to your answer. Okay, let me even add something. Let me add something. On the 16th, 16th of March, 16th of March, Yao's letter, on 16th of March, Yao's letter of acceptance got to Yao. So, Yao, letter of acceptance got to Kofi. Yao, letters of acceptance got to Kofi. Let me add this one. Yao's letter of acceptance got to Kofi. Yao wrote the letter of acceptance on the uh, ninth, ninth, is that the ninth? And then posted it. It got to Kofi on the sixteenth. So now the person, I've already given the first person, when did offer take place? B, when did acceptance take place? Then finally, was the revocation effective? Why? So that brings us to the end of this session. We we'll meet another time and talk about acceptance. Till we meet again, it's bye bye.